I recently stumbled upon this trick for approximating the square root of any number a by computing this fraction including the number b, which is the perfect square closest to a. This calculation is so simple that it can be done in your head most of the time, but it gives a surprisingly good approximation. And I want to give a quick example of how this formula works before discussing how well it actually works and why it works and how to derive it, which I find very interesting. So let's say we want to compute the square root of 68. So a is going to be 68. Now the perfect square closest to that is 64, which is 8 squared. So by perfect square, I just mean a square of an integer number. So we approximate the root of 68 by a plus b, which is 132 divided by 2 times the square root of 64, it's 2 times 8, 16. So we have 132 over 16, which we can divide by 4. So 132 by 4 is 25 plus 8, that's 33 divided by 4. And this is nothing but 8.25. The actual value for the square root of 68 is 8.2462 and so on. So you can see this is actually a really good approximation. Now you might say, oh, I just got really lucky or I picked an example where the approximation works really well. So I asked myself, what is the error for all the integers from 1 to 100? So we're going to jump into GNU plot real quick and press enter and here you see the absolute error for this approximation formula for all the integers from 1 to 100. So there are a few things to notice. First of all, for the perfect squares, so 81, 64 and so on, uh, the formula gives an error of 0. So it is exact for perfect squares. And then it works really well for numbers that are close to perfect squares. So for the numbers around the perfect squares, the error is really small. And then it gets larger and larger. And for numbers in between two perfect squares, the error is largest. And it's also largest for small numbers. So maybe don't use this formula for numbers below 10, depending on how large of an error you can allow. But you can see if we go above 20, the error is already below 0.03. So that's actually a really small error given how simple the formula is. Now why is that and how does it work? Well, the fact that the error is uh, small for numbers close to the perfect squares already gives a strong hint. This kind of smells like a Taylor expansion and in fact it is. So if you have the square root of any number and now I'm going to call this b plus a number epsilon that is small, at least compared to b, you can always approximate this by computing its Taylor series. So the first term is going to be this expression evaluated at epsilon equals zero. So that's just the square root of b plus the first derivative of square root of b plus epsilon evaluated at epsilon equals zero times epsilon. And then you would get other terms containing higher orders of epsilon that we're just going to ignore right now. This is just an approximation. Uh, computing this gives square root of b plus, and the derivative here is 1 over 2, and then we would get the square root of b plus epsilon, but then we decide to evaluate that epsilon equals 0, so all that's left is square root of b times epsilon. Now, what is epsilon in our case? What we actually care for is the square root of a and not the square root of b. But the square root of a is nothing but the square root of b plus a minus b. And we assume that this a minus b is our small number epsilon. Now you can see the number is smaller the closer a is to uh, the closest perfect square b. So the smaller this number is, the better the approximation will be. And this is exactly what we saw in the graph earlier. But we can now start to insert this into this formula. 
So this is square root of b plus epsilon is a minus b over 2 square root of b. And then we write the square root of b as 2b over 2 square root of b. And then we can extend the fraction and include the numerator of the second term, which is plus a minus b. And now this is nothing but a plus b over 2 square root of b. And that's exactly our approximate result for the square root of a. So as you can see, this formula is nothing but a linear Taylor expansion of the square root of any number around the closest perfect square. But it's still quite an ingenious idea to expand around the closest perfect square because that's a number that you can easily compute the square root in your head. So you get a really simple expression that gives an astonishingly good result. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.